the antibiotic of choice for intrapartum prophylaxis is intravenous penicillin. It's effective and well tolerated, making it the preferred option. However, for patients with a penicillin allergy, alternative antibiotics such as ampicillin, cefazolin, clindamycin or vancomycin may be used. The choice of alternative depends on the patient's allergy profile and bacterial susceptibility. Following guidelines from authoritative bodies like the American College of Obstetricians and Gynecologists or ACOG and the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention or CDC is paramount. These organizations provide up-to-date recommendations that help ensure the best care practices. Proper documentation and monitoring are also critical components of GBS prevention. It's important to document the GBS status and the administration of prophylaxis in the maternal medical records. Additionally, after delivery, healthcare providers should closely monitor neonates for any signs of GBS infection, especially if intrapartum prophylaxis wasn't administered or if risk factors were present. To illustrate the importance of these guidelines, let's look at a real-life case study. A 29-year-old woman, Sarah, was in her 37th week of pregnancy. During a routine prenatal visit, her obstetrician performed a rectovaginal culture, which came back positive for GBS. Given this result, her healthcare team prepared to administer intravenous penicillin once she went into labour. However, Sarah went into labour prematurely at 35 weeks. When she arrived at the hospital, her GBS status was unknown to the attending team. Adding to the urgency, she developed a fever of 38.5 degrees Celsius during labor. Recognizing these risk factors, preterm labor and intrapartum fever, the medical team promptly administered intrapartum prophylaxis with intravenous penicillin. Sarah delivered a healthy baby girl, Emma, who was closely monitored for signs of GBS infection. Thanks to the timely administration of antibiotics and adherence to established guidelines, Emma showed no signs of infection and was discharged home healthy and thriving. This case underscores the importance of antenatal screening, timely intrapartum prophylaxis and vigilant monitoring. By following these practices, we can significantly reduce the risk of neonatal GBS infection and ensure healthier outcomes for both mothers and their newborns. Thank you for tuning in to this episode of Med Madness Podcast. We hope you found this discussion on preventing neonatal GBS infection informative and valuable. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to reach out. Until next time, stay informed and stay healthy.